Editing photos in Adobe Lightroom can be a slow and complicated process, but it doesn't have to be. We're going to talk about how we edit hundreds or even thousands of wedding images quickly and efficiently using a variety of Lightroom editing presets that we created ourselves. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. But we're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. Now, today we're continuing our post-production secrets video series with our exact editing method and how we absolutely crush portrait sessions and wedding days in basically no time at all. And as a reminder, this is part five in a six part series that really builds off itself. So if you've missed any of our past videos in this series, make sure you check those out before you dive into this editing video. So if you speak to any wedding photographer or even just portrait photographers, editing is almost like a dirty word, right? We got into photography because we love being out with our clients, capturing beautiful memories and creating art with our cameras. I can't say that I know a single person who got into photography because they love spending hour after hour just retouching photos in Lightroom. But one way or another, editing has to get done. So here's how we make the process as smooth and efficient as possible. So there's no way around it. Editing photos can take a long time, but that doesn't mean that there aren't ways to make it go more quickly, right? So the first wedding we ever shot, it was about an 11 hour day, but I would say that it probably took us close to 25 hours to call and edit and deliver that wedding day, which is literally more than double the amount of time we actually spent shooting. However, fast forward a few years, and just before we began outsourcing some of our own post-production, we could call, edit, and deliver an eight hour wedding day in just under eight hours. So how did we cut post-production by almost 70%? by creating efficient workflows. So if you remember all the way back to part two or step two in this series, we talked about the importance of keyword sorting your images. So if you followed along with that, as well as the second round call that we talked about in step three, then you should now have a series of neat and tidy collections, each representing the very best photos from a certain part of the day. Now, of course, if we're talking portraits, there's just one chunk of portraits. Yeah. The example that we'll be using kind of throughout this video is from Nancy and Ryan's wedding and more specifically their wedding party portraits. After we finished the second round call, we had a collection of 84 unique two-star wedding party portraits. So just like with calling, separating the editing into smaller chunks represented by different parts of the day will make your job so much more manageable. So every time you finish one little section, like when you finish the getting ready details or when you finish the wedding party, your brain's gonna give you a little hit of endorphins and you're kind of celebrating a series of smaller victories rather than sitting down and being like, oh my gosh, I have 1100 photos to edit. Also, just like we do with calling, another psychological trick that we do when editing is to start with those less creative fun parts of the day and work towards the more creative fun parts of the day photographically speaking this just gives us something to look forward to as we edit so for us this means we typically start with dancing photos and then move into like the toasts and the speeches ceremony etc and then we work our way up to details and portraits usually the golden hour portraits or the post first look portraits with our couples are usually our favorite photos. So that's what we save for end, almost as like a little treat for finishing off editing the wedding. But just like with calling, the specific order might be different for you. We just know that these little psychological hacks will make us less likely to get distracted and take you know, a break that ends up wasting an hour, ends up with us wasting an hour on social media. And if calling and editing takes you eight hours, but you took you know four one hour breaks, throughout, then it really actually took you 12 hours. And of course, there's a difference between taking intentional times to give your brain a break and getting distracted and wasting time on social media, right? We all know that. But um, don't forget, an example we used a couple weeks ago when talking about the same problem with culling is that if you waste four hours per wedding, and trust me, between culling and editing, it is very easy to waste four hours, uh, and you shoot 40 weddings a year, that's the equivalent of losing an entire month each year to just wasting time, right? And that's not something you wanna do. Now, of course, if you're editing a portrait session, all these things talking about breaking up into chunks doesn't really apply because you've just got the portrait session, which you'll probably edit all in one go. But again, it's a much smaller, more manageable chunk. Yeah, so exactly how do we edit photos? We use two essential features in Adobe Lightroom, develop presets and batch editing. And here's how we actually do it. So the first thing we do is open up the wedding gallery to one of those sections of the day that we talked about, like wedding party portraits, for example. And the first thing we do after we open that is open the metadata tab in the top of our Lightroom panel. Then we're gonna make sure that we're only looking at images from a single lens. So the 35 millimeter F1.8, for example. 
Next, we select an image and apply the, a preset that we created specifically for outdoor natural light portraits in overcast light for the 35 millimeter lens, but more on how we made the preset below. So that preset isn't gonna edit the image perfectly, but it's gonna get us a good 90% of the way there. So we'll make a few quick adjustments, and usually we don't have to leave the basic panel, and most of the time, once we've applied the preset, we're really literally just adjusting maybe the white balance, the tint, and the overall exposure. Now that one photo is edited, it's time to batch edit. Using the film strip at the bottom of our screen, we'll use the shift and controls keys or the command and control keys on a Mac to select all the images that look like they were captured in a similar lighting situation. Now keep in mind, because of the metadata tab, we're only looking at images captured with that same 35 millimeter lens. Then we use the sync button to apply the settings from the first image to all the others. Now, since those images were all taken with the same lens and in the same lighting situation, they're also now gonna be about 90% edited. So we're gonna run through each of those photos one at a time very quickly, just touching each one for light and color. But in just a few minutes, this entire section of the day with this lens is edited. So we'll repeat that process with each lens we used during that portion of the day using presets that correspond to each lens and lighting situation. Then we'll take one final look at that section of the gallery as a whole with all lenses considered to make sure that it looks like one cohesive work. And boom, Nancy and, Ryan, Nancy and Ryan's wedding party portraits are done. So something you probably noticed in that last section is that as we were explaining that process, we made one big assumption, which is that you already have presets for every single lens and lighting condition already created in your light room. Well, <laughs> While we know that this isn't the case for most people when they're first getting started, developing those presets isn't as daunting as it sounds. It all starts with a single basic preset. We created ours from scratch about a year into our business, but it would be just as easy to purchase one and work off of that. If you're still really developing your own style and, and finding something unique to yourself, then your basic beginner preset that you're creating is probably just gonna be based on some of your previous edits that you've done. Although you can always maybe compare your current work to some of the work of photographers that you love and maybe tweak your preset to match their style a little bit more, kind of however you land on that first preset is kind of up to you. Yeah, alternatively, if you're very new to photography and have no idea how to attain a certain style, then spending money to just purchase a preset can be worth all of the time that you save. And to be clear, we're not using this video to sell presets. We do not have any available, at least for right now. But um, either way, once you have that very first preset, what we recommend doing is making a few variations, like one version of that preset for each lens that you regularly shoot with. So in the develop module, there's this really handy checkbox under the lens correction panel, and it's called enable profile corrections. And Lightroom basically has this built-in catalog of popular lenses and it has like hundreds of lenses in here and it will automatically make adjustments to your images based on the lens you use. Now, this is only really correcting for vignette and edge distortion, kind of the way that the lens might affect how the image looks right around the edges, but this still is gonna help you come a long way in basically taking images taken from multiple lenses look a little bit more cohesive. Yeah. So we'll take our basic preset, add the lens correction, so for example, the Nikon 85 millimeter 1.4, and save it in our presets tab as overcast 85 millimeter. Then we'll find an image taken in the same light, but with the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.2 and apply that same preset. We'll change the lens correction to the right lens and make any adjustments in the HSL color panel that are necessary. Since different lenses can interpret the same light and colors in slightly different ways. Yeah, and then we'll save that preset as a brand new preset called overcast 50 millimeter. Now, sometimes the changes between lenses are pretty small and almost unnoticeable. But on the other hand, a preset for say an 85 millimeter prime versus a 14 to 24 millimeter wide angle zooms are going to look very different. And this is doubly the case if you're using lenses from multiple camera manufacturers, right? So if you have like a Nikon prime lens and then a Sigma zoom lens and then a Tamron macro, the changes are gonna be even a little bit more noticeable. So how you make adjustments to each of those individual presets is gonna be even more important. Now, if you're having trouble getting a consistent editing look across different lenses, try this. Go outside during the time when you'd typically be shooting like golden hour or mid-afternoon in open shade and bring a friend to stand in as your subject. Ask them to stand still and as quickly as you can, take a photo of the same subject from the same position with the same light with every single lens that you own. 
So this is gonna make it even easier to create a whole batch of presets that are gonna get you a, a consistent look across multiple lenses, right? And then once you've done that, you should repeat that process in different lighting situations. So when you're looking at the same subject in the same light, it's gonna be more obvious what changes in exposure and saturation, hue, vignette, et cetera, that are all gonna be needed to make that lenses preset match cohesively with all of your other lenses presets. Yeah. And then once you have a preset for each lens, we recommend having a second version for indoor photography. Your preset that you use for indoor photography will need to adjust for the different exposure, the contract, and HSL color profiles. Then repeat the process for overcast versus sunny, uh, backlighting versus direct sunlight, etc. Experiment with these presets until you get the look that you desire across a wide range of lighting conditions and lenses. So if you're only shooting with one lens right now, then you might just need a small handful of presets. On the other hand, Sarah and I have seven different lenses that we use throughout a wedding day and in various lighting situations. So right now, every lens that we shoot with has its own version of our preset for backlighting, direct sun, indoor, open shade, and overcast. So we have something like 30 presets at this point. And we also have a few extras for really specific situations, like when we're shooting flat light details or ring shots on a wedding day, or if we wanna turn an image black and white in Lightroom. Yeah. So yes, this is going to take a lot of time to make these profiles, and you'll likely need to make adjustments over time as your style changes and as your shooting develops. But trust us, you will thank us later. Mm -hmm. Once you have these presets made, your editing process will become so much more quick and efficient. You know, no more editing photos from scratch. And this batch editing will just make your process as painless as possible. And that way you can spend less time editing photos in Lightroom and more time loving and serving your clients. But that's it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Our hope is that this video has helped you as you create your own post-production process, especially when it comes to saving you time when editing photos. And if you haven't already, we really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. In that group, we're just building a community of other photographers who are also building their photography businesses and helping each other out along the way. So next week, we're gonna wrap up the series with how we export and deliver our clients' wedding and portrait sessions to them. So make sure that you like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our new videos. And if you found this video helpful, if you have questions, or if you'd like to add something that you think we missed, feel free to comment below. But that's it. Thanks, guys. See you next week.